I'm Dr. Jill Shah from MFind and today I'm going to talk about malaria. Malaria is a life-threatening disease. It is usually transmitted to the bite of an infected Anopheles mosquito. This mosquitoes carry Plasmodium parasite. So when this mosquito bites you, the Plasmodium parasite, it runs into your bloodstream and they cause the infection. Now, what exactly are the causes of malaria? There are usually four species of Plasmodium parasite that causes malaria in human race. First is Plasmodium vivax, second Plasmodium falciparum, third Plasmodium ovale, fourth Plasmodium malariae, and fifth Plasmodium novalsi. Plasmodium falciparum, they cause a severe form of disease. Hence, those who are infected with this species, they have a high risk of death. An infected mother can also transmit the infection to a baby at birth. This is known as congenital malaria. Malaria is usually transmitted through blood. Hence, the malaria can also be transmitted during an organ transplant, during blood transfusion, and due to the usage of shell needles and syringes. So what exactly are signs and symptoms of malaria? A typical malarial infection is usually characterized by the following signs and symptoms. Number one, a high grade fever. Number two, moderate or severe shaking chills. Number three is sweating. The other signs and symptoms may also include headache, nausea, vomiting and diarrhea. A typical malarial infection usually begins within few weeks after being bitten by an infected mosquito. Some of the malarial parasites can even remain dormant in your body up to one year. So how do we diagnose malaria? Blood tests can detect the malarial parasites. There are two methods to detect malarial parasites. Number one, microscopy and number two, antigen test. Microscopy is the gold standard method to diagnose malaria. In this, we use blood smears under the microscope. The thick smears are used to identify the malarial parasites resting in the red blood cells. The antigen tests are less sensitive than the microscopy. In this, we look for parasite-derived products such as LDH, that is lactate dehydrogenase. We use dipstick methods in antigen tests. Now we shall discuss about the treatment of malaria. The treatment of malaria usually depends upon the stages of the infection. The prophylactic therapy, it is usually given to non-infected people who are traveling to malarial prone areas. The most common anti-malarial drugs includes chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, primaquine, artemisinin compounds such as artisunate, artemether and artiether. So the main mechanism of anti-malarial drugs is that it kills the sporozoids as well as the gametocytes. The type of the anti-malarial drug, it depends upon the age, the severity of the disease, the plasmodium species. So now we shall discuss regarding the preventive strategies of malaria. There are three main methods of prevention. Number one, reducing the men and vector contact by sleeping under insecticide bed nets, by using mosquito repellents, coils as well as creams and third is by full clothing. Number two, by reducing vector density by spraying insecticide as well as aerosol sprays. And number three is by reducing the parasite population by early detection, diagnosis and treatment. The only approved anti-malarial vaccine as of now by WHO is RTSS vaccine which is also known as Moscurix. So in October 2021, WHO recommended a large scale use of this vaccine for children. A total dose of four injections are required for full protection. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any doubts or queries regarding it, feel free to reach us or you can even comment below at the end of this video. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like and share this video. For more such videos, do subscribe to the MFind channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any update.